Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. What's up guys? My name's Andy from 1A Auto. In this video, I'm gonna be removing and reinstalling a radiator in this 2008 Chevy Silverado work truck. If you need this part or other parts for your vehicle, click the link in the description and head over to 1AAuto.com. Uh, disconnect this mass airflow sensor connector. Just push down on the lock, pull the connector off. I'm gonna loosen up this worm clamp right here. Just use a straight blade screwdriver. Loosen that up. We can take this snorkel off here, slide it off. And we're gonna do the same on this side. There's a worm clamp over here on the throttle body. Right there, loosen that up. Slide this off. There's a little hose right here that just connects to the valve cover on the passenger side. Take that hose off and then set this aside. I'm just gonna grab the front side of the mass airflow sensor or the front side of the air, back, air box and just slide up. Oops, let's just grab the whole air box and slide it out of your way. There's some tabs on the bottom that lock into a grommet. And then this actually, we're gonna have to move this, just slide this off there. You have to reinstall that right here because when it goes together, it's got to push down. So we'll just take that, just take a straight blade screwdriver, just push this in here. It's kind of difficult sometimes. Might be easier with a smaller, like, pocket screwdriver. Make sure that's all the way down, so that's good. Set that aside. All right, next I'm gonna take these two 10 millimeter bolts out. These hold the transmission cooler lines on. So take those two out, use a 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet. And normally these are caged, so you can just slide them out of the way. What that means is that the bolt's not gonna come off of that bracket. It'll just stay on there, there's a little nut thing on there. So we'll do the same for the bottom one. Now we're going to disconnect these electrical connectors. There's two of them. Just push down on the tab and then wiggle the connector down. Just like that. We'll do the same for the other side. Sometimes these connectors get a little stuck. Take a little screwdriver and pry against the lock and then push it down. Might be able to get it out. Just like that. Wiggle it out. Now we're gonna take these two bolts out. There's one here, one over here. Let me use a 13 millimeter socket and a ratchet. Take those bolts out. Now we're gonna grab the fan, fan shroud and we're gonna just lift up. There's some clips right here on this side where this clips, clips into the radiator. You gotta get it out of the way of the coolant upper radiator hose. I'm actually gonna push it this way. So I'll slide this side up first, get this out. Pull that straight out just like that. So there's no drain on this radiator, so I'm gonna have to release this clamp and take this hose off, and that's how we're gonna drain the radiator. Um, to get this clamp off, I'm actually gonna use this tool. We sell this tool at 1AAuto.com. It will go onto the clamp right here, and then when I tighten this up, it's gonna um, tighten up on this cable, and that will open up the clamp so that we can release it. So I want to make sure I have a bucket underneath to drain the coolant 
And now we're going to tighten up on this clamp. And because this clamp is really rusty, I think it actually just broke on me. I'm just going to use a pry bar and be careful if you're reusing your radiator not to ruin the fins or anything on the radiator. There we go. <clears throat> Starting to drain. Take this tool off, just release that, set that aside. And here is the clamp. And as you can see, it broke right there. Here's the other part of the clamp. This would go on like this. And that's what puts pressure on the coolant hose to secure it to the lower radiator. And it looks like this broke, because it's rusted right there, this broke before. You can see that broke off. And then it wasn't able to clamp the radiator good enough. So that's why we were getting a coolant leak. And then when I tried to compress this, this side broke. Because you can see it's a little shinier right there. Now we're gonna take this upper radiator hose off and use some hose clamp pliers. Just release this hose clamp. work it back and forth. Get the hose clamp off this area. And we can grab the hose and just rock back and forth. Twist it, pull the hose off. I'm gonna remove this hose. This hose goes to the coolant reservoir. And I'm just gonna take this hose clamp off. My hose clamp pliers don't fit in there, so I'm just gonna use some needle nose pliers. Squeeze those. Pull that hose off. All right, next we're gonna take off these transmission cooler lines. There's a little cap on the line. Slide the cap off. So there's a little lock ring in here, kind of like a snap ring. Um, they make special tools. This is one of the plastic ones. Generally, the plastic ones don't work. I just have not had any luck with them. You slide the tool on and then you twist it and it's supposed to spread the fingers and then you grab the line and slide it out and it came out that time but normally they're pretty difficult to take out that way but what you can do you can take a pick as well and just grab Need to find the side that's open. Just slide underneath the clip. Just using a 90 degree pick. And then slide the little clip out. And then you, once the clip's off, then you can just grab the line, pull it out. Okay, so to reinstall the clip, if you're gonna reuse the radiator or you're gonna have to reuse this, you're gonna slide one side of the clip in while the line is out, and then you're gonna just rock the clip all the way around, and then it'll lock in place. So when you disconnect these lines, you're gonna want a different drain bucket. You're gonna want, because it's gonna leak transmission fluid, and you don't want that leaking into your coolant bucket. So we're gonna take these two bolts out, use a 13 millimeter socket and a ratchet. that one out. All right, now we're gonna grab the radiator. I'm just gonna slide it up, and tip it back a little bit, and then you can pull it right out. When you're putting a new radiator in, you're gonna wanna make sure you take these rubber grommets off the base and swap them over to the new one. They just normally come right off, just like that. Same with the other side. on and then same with the top there may be these rubber grommets come off as well you can take this center pin out first and slide this out and transfer it over to your new one and just 
slide it in. And slide this little center thing in. Just like that. Now we're gonna take this radiator, slide it back into position. I'm gonna line up those two grommets on the lower part. And that looks pretty good. It's good over there. Now we're gonna take these two bolts, and get these started. And same with the other one. Take my 13 millimeter socket and ratchet, tighten these down. Snug that one down, and then I'm gonna do the same for the other side. Snug that one down. Now I'm gonna replace this hose clamp that was broken before. So I'll just take this, make sure you find one that fits the hose properly. Slide the hose back on. Now you want the hose clamp to go as close to the bump. You can feel where the, the radiator actually is. There's a little bump there. And then we'll take a screwdriver and just tighten this hose clamp up. You don't want to tighten it too tight because the radiator is plastic and you'll crack it. Snug. Twist it a little bit, see if it's tight enough. Just tighten it a little bit more. All right, that should be good. You can always tighten it up more if it's leaking. I'm gonna reattach this transmission cooler line. Lock that on and then put the little retainer over that. Just holds the clip in there. And do the same for the top one. Now I'll reinstall this hose that goes to the coolant reservoir. Just take my needle nose pliers. Press this on and then line this clamp up where it went before, just like that. Now we'll reinstall this upper radiator hose, slide it in position. We'll take some hose clamp pliers and move this hose clamp. If this is worn out like the other one, then you'd want to replace this one as well. Ours is still pretty good. Just like that. Nice and tight. All right, now we're gonna take this coolant fans. I'm just gonna slide it generally the same way we pulled it out. That in there. It is slightly easier if you had the coolant hose off. You have a little bit more room, but it's not impossible to do it without it. Get those lined up. We'll take these bolts, get this bolt started, same with this one. And I'm going to take my 13 millimeter socket and a ratchet, tighten these bolts down, right, snug that down, and I'll do the same with the other side. And I'm going to connect the electrical connectors, just get this lined up. And lock it down, and same with this one. We're gonna install these bracket bolts that go to the cooler lines, the transmission cooler lines. Get those lined up. I'll take my 10 millimeter socket and ratchet and tighten them down. And just snug that down. We'll do the same with this one. All right, now we're gonna reinstall the air box. Uh, if you have trouble installing this, you could separate it and install the base first. But what we want to do is this little piece is going to go in this groove here and these two ears are going to go into those grommets down there. So we'll slide that in position. Like this. And 
And once you have it in position, you just push down on the air box. Now we want to line this snorkel up. We're going to line this up over the throttle body. And then keep in mind this hose, we're going to have to attach that hose as well. So slide that on. Slide that on. And we'll slide this in position as well on the mass airflow sensor. And I can take my straight blade screwdriver, tighten this worm clamp up here. Just snug, and then same on the throttle body. Make sure this is all the way down, just push it down if you have to. And just snug that up as well. Make sure it's nice and tight. Now we'll take this connector, connect the mass airflow sensor, lock it in place. All right, now I'm gonna add coolant to the system. Um, I'm gonna use this funnel. We actually sell this funnel at 1AAuto.com. There's a different adapters you can use. This will fit right on the coolant reservoir. Now in this vehicle, you don't add the coolant through the radiator. There's no radiator cap on this vehicle. You do it all through the coolant reservoir. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure you add the appropriate coolant. You wanna check the owner's manual and use a 50-50 mix of coolant and water. Okay, so we're gonna add the coolant level up to the line right here. That's where the coolant level should be. And we're gonna run the vehicle. We're gonna constantly monitor the coolant level while the engine is running. I can leave this funnel on here. Um, sometimes the fluid level will come up here and then a lot of times there'll be an air bubble in the engine and it'll burp. It'll, once the um, thermostat opens up, it will let the air bubble through and that'll cause the the coolant to go back down. So you wanna monitor that, make sure that you add coolant when it goes down. And after about 10 minutes, that should be good. Then you can come over here and carefully check the hose, the upper radiator hose, make sure this is hot, be careful. It should be hot. And once that's hot, that means your thermostat is opened and all the coolant's cycling through. And then you can shut the vehicle off, let it cool down, Recheck your levels, and when it's cooled down, take it for a test drive, drive it again, and recheck your level one more time. You should be good to go. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.